Hello and welcome back to another Understand Your Buyer video. In this video, we're looking at the notion of bad translation. So what is it? If your product, service or business name translates poorly into other languages, then it could be a challenge or worse, could be a scandal because it's going to mean something very different to the people you're trying to sell to. How does it work? Well, if you sell internationally, how the name of your business product or service translates can make a big difference. From slang and locally known phrases and words to pronunciation to straight up just bad direct translations, there are some real risks to your brand that you need to be prepared for. A simple example is a coffee cup brand name in IKEA in Thailand. So IKEA have coffee cups, a range of coffee cups in Thailand, and it translated literally to cup of death cup of death so nobody's buying that coffee cup brand are they ikea but you have to translate these things and understand and prepare to know about it there's a company in the uk that does translations frankly fluent they're called and to make this point they've taken six really well-known um taglines and badly translated them and what they've done is just taken the comprehension and the meaning out of it to make their point so Frosties, rather than they're great, it's they're pleasant. Just do it becomes simply enact it, which you can argue is that is a direct translation of it, but it loses all the magic, doesn't it? Have a break, have a Kit Kat, discontinue work consuming Kit Kat. Being cute, um, you can do it when you being cute it is a phrase you should be able to do it if you being cute. It's finger tongue in tasty. That was just a bit weird. And <laughs> from Maybelline, maybe she's born with it maybe it's congenital <laughs> so the translations although literally speaking they are quote unquote correct they take all of the meaning and all of the comprehension out and it completely ruins it ultimately so how can you use this well there's a couple of ways that you can approach this the first is you can manually translate into the languages of the markets you're going to be operating in to check for issues and it's best to use a person to help you rather than technology, like a, a native speaker, because they're going to help you to pick up with some of the nuances that are going to be lost through online translators. So an online translator might give you simply enact it from just do it, <laughs> but a person will be able to translate that properly so we retain the meaning. The second one is you can rename your business product or service entirely just for that market. So this is why the Vauxhall Nova, which is a model of car, no longer exists because the word Nova literally translated to doesn't go. So the Vauxhall doesn't go. Funnily enough, that didn't sell very well. So they renamed that to the Vauxhall Corsa. Coca-Cola have also changed how their name is translated in China. So when Coca-Cola was first introduced in China, the name was translated into Chinese phonetically as Kekukila, which unfortunately literally means biting a wax tadpole. Biting a wax tadpole, which is a really strange phrase. So the company changed the trans translation to Kekukele, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly, which then translates to happiness in the mouth. Happiness in the mouth is a much better translation than biting a wax tadpole. So that's a bad translation. If you sell internationally, it's essential that your market translates. If you sell internationally, it's essential that your marketing translates well so as not to offend or bemuse your potential buyers. Well, that's it for another Understand Your Buyer video. And if you like this kind of stuff, then you'll definitely like the book, which you can buy at understandyourbuyer.com.